Finally Friday, and it's weather for Weather Geeks time. I'm recording this a little after 2 o'clock on this Friday afternoon, and got a lot to talk about over the next week, so let's get right to it. First of all, I love these high-resolution satellite pictures. As you know, I post a lot of these on social media. We're going to take a little fly here in, in Google Earth and show you uh, not clouds, but snow on the ground all the way down into the Carolinas. Uh, the satellite picking up beautifully the, the snow cover down in North Carolina, Virginia. You can easily pick out the Appalachian Mountains in through here. Uh, which, of course, are very, very snow-covered. Some places had up to two feet of snow in the higher elevations of western Virginia and eastern West Virginia. It will pan up to Pennsylvania, and we start to get in some clouds here, so it becomes a little harder to tell between snow and clouds. But uh, a beautiful shot here. You can also see the uh, frozen Great Lakes, at least mostly frozen. Uh, Lake Ontario is very deep, so it has a hard time freezing over. The western end of Lake Michigan also so showing some blue there, but Lake Erie, notice... Hardly any blue showing up, so it's almost 100% frozen. Uh, and if it's not 100% frozen yet, it probably will be before the weekend is through. It's going to be a cold weekend. All right, yesterday's big blockbuster nor'easter is now off the uh, uh, coast, or almost off the coast, just east of Maine. Uh, look how windy and ugly it looks up there in northern New England. Our next weather maker is out here. We've got low pressure centered uh, along the lower Ohio River Valley with a cold front back here. And this is the system that's going to be another miss for us for the most part tonight. I'm going to zoom in here and show you what the radar looks like. Again, this is valid as of about 2 o'clock on this Friday. Some pretty decent snows occurring. Indianapolis heading over towards Dayton. Uh, Cincinnati on north getting some uh, moderate snow, even some heavy snow at this point. So I-70 west of Columbus is turning very, very messy. It turns into rain and actually some heavy bouts of rain down towards the lower Ohio River this afternoon. Now this storm is going to keep tracking east. And for the most part, this is going to be too far south to bring the Mahoning Valley, the Shenango Valley, much snow at all. I'm going to show you a couple of computer model simulations that will bear out that idea as we head into tonight. Uh, let me uh, first of all start with one more look at the current conditions. It's cold outside this afternoon. It's in the 20s. Temperatures have been holding steady pretty much all day. Notice how much warmer it is south of the Ohio River and south of that storm system. Quick uh, perusal of the, the national temperatures. It's not bad in the south where they're doing a lot of melting today. It's in the 50s in Charlotte. Uh, it's in the 70s and 80s in Texas. And a lot of the warmth that's building out here is finally, finally going to get the green light to come east towards the end of next week. All right, let's talk about tonight, and I'm going to show you a simulated radar here based on the, the high-resolution NAM model, the North American model. This is the simulated radar tonight at about uh, 9 p.m. with precipitation up to about I-70 uh, or just south of it. I, I think the model is underdoing a little bit the northern extent of this, so I suspect you can add a little layer of snow like this on top of what you see uh, here graphically at about uh, 9 o'clock this evening. Here's one in the morning. And this is when uh, this system will make its closest bypass to our south. And again, I think you can add a little layer of light snow on the northern fringes of this. And that would bring some light snow up to about the Route 30 corridor tonight. So if you live uh, down towards Lisbon and especially East Liverpool, maybe East Palestine, I, I do think you're going to get some light snow tonight. And you may even get up to a half an inch, three quarters of an inch, maybe even an inch, especially right down in here, extreme southern Columbiana County. That's a possibility for tonight, but most of the snow, most of the accumulating snow is going to be from Interstate 70, Columbus to Wheeling to Pittsburgh, on south into West Virginia. Fast forward this to uh, tomorrow morning then at about daybreak, and at this point the uh, system is starting to pull away. This will be a big snow producer, or at least a moderate snow producer again for the central Appalachians on Saturday. So if you happen to be doing some traveling on Saturday east on I-80 or heading down towards the PA Turnpike down through here, it's going to be an ugly Saturday, so uh, plan accordingly. It'll be it'll be tough to get through the mountains of central Pennsylvania on Saturday. All right, uh, one more view of, of this snow. Uh, switching sources a little bit here, showing you the high-resolution rapid refresh model. This is a real high-resolution model that's run once an hour. This is the snowfall accumulation through tonight, and uh, this is a little harder to see, but uh, Youngstown's about right here, southern Columbiana County down in here. And this gives the southern half of Columbiana County a, a half an inch or, or a little more worth of snow tonight. Uh, so south of Route 30, you know, I think we can get a little accumulation, but certainly the higher amounts are going to be down here, three, four, maybe even five inches worth of snow by late tonight. Uh, Parkersburg, Marietta, Athens, uh, Lancaster, maybe Cambridge, places like that. 
All right, so for the weekend, uh, that storm pushes away Saturday. We'll see some flurries around in the morning, maybe a few breaks of afternoon sun on Saturday. Sunday, another weak uh, system, even weaker, I think, uh, will cruise through. This is a Sunday morning's map. A little weak area of low pressure in here. There's going to be some light snow and flurries. Maybe this is a candy coating around on Sunday. So we'll keep an eye on that to make sure it doesn't intensify at the last second, like last weekend's, but at this point it doesn't look real likely. Then quiet weather for Sunday night, Monday morning. This next weather maker looks slower and slower now for uh, Monday, probably pretty late in the day now. Here's the uh, newest GFS. It has precipitation in here by evening. The last night's European model is a little bit slower, but bottom line is uh, – it's going to be pretty late in the day, I think, before precipitation moves in. The big question is going to be what type of precipitation is it? Still not real confident on that answer. I think there could be a mix, especially at the onset. As the precipitation moves in, there might be some sleet, maybe even some freezing rain. Uh, we should see a change over to plain rain at some point, at least briefly, and then it'll end as some light snow, I think, Tuesday morning or Monday night, first thing Tuesday morning. And then the warmth is coming. Big story becomes the warmth. Here's the uh, latest hot off the presses European model forecasted high temperatures for next thursday it's got a 55 here in youngstown it's got 70 down along the ohio river so boy that looks really nice that's thursday here's friday looks a little cooler on friday there's probably gonna be a front in the vicinity on friday and just depending on the timing and location of that front it's not gonna be cold but it may not be quite as warm friday as it will be thursday the european has 51 degrees for a high here on friday and then uh uh, Saturday could warm back up. So, you know, I think the bottom line for the warmth next week, late and heading into next weekend, we've got at least one day and possibly two or three days where we could get into the upper 50s to around 60. I think there's going to be one day where we make a real healthy run at it. It might be Thursday, might be Saturday too. Uh, but that period Thursday through Saturday, it just depends on how everything lines up. Uh, there could be, best case scenario, two or three days where we get well into the 50s. But right now I think there's guaranteed to be one. The two or three day idea remains, you know, kind of up in the air. Uh, GFS, a long range temperature outlook here, temperature anomalies. Uh, we've got, of course, our warmth for the tail end of next week. Enjoy that if we can, because I'll tell you, as we switch gears into late February and into March, the models are strongly pointing towards colder weather. So, you know, the kind of readings we see late next week, we probably won't see again very often until the second half of March. So, boy, I hope we can get outside and enjoy it. Uh, we'll wrap things up on this Friday on a nice note. Uh, I wanted to you know, end on a positive note here. This is the sun chart for the rest of the month. Today, of course, is Valentine's Day, the 14th. Our sunset this evening will be at 5.56. But uh, we're picking up daylight in a hurry. We're picking up about two and a half minutes per day now. So by the end of the month, on the 28th, sunset 6.12, sunrise before 7 o'clock on that final day of February, giving us 11 hours, 13, almost 14 minutes worth of daylight at the end of February compared to today. Uh, it's about a half an hour more daylight. So the days are getting longer. It's starting to become noticeable, especially in the evening. It's getting darker uh, quite a bit later. So, hey, a little little bright note for you to wrap up weather for Weather Geeks on this Friday. Check out my forecast tonight on 21 News at 6. We'll be on again after the Olympics tonight at 1130. And have yourself a great weekend.